everyone, welcome to another episode of The Process where we sit down and talk with an artist from the VFX games and CGI industry, talk about a personal project of theirs, talk about the process, show insights into the mind and workflow of that particular artist. And in today's episode, we're sitting with previous artist and supervisor, Martin Bell. Martin's worked on features such as Jurassic World, Mowgli, Aladdin, Hobbs and Shaw, and many other feature films. And he's recently dived into the world of filmmaking inside of Unreal Engine and we explore how he's been making his own short films using real-time workflows. Hope you enjoy the video. I'm Martin Bell and I come from Yorkshire. I'm a previous supervisor and uh, what we're terming, I guess, is a real a real time filmmaker, but previous supervisor is my is my bread and butter. My first exposure to 3D graphics really was Battlezone on, on the PC, um, which I'm, I made levels for online. My code name was Nightwing. I was like 13, Batman obsessed. And then eventually uh, Activision put together a level pack um, featuring like, like the best sort of rated levels that are in the community um, and paid everyone for it. And I'm like 14 getting a check for like $400 uh, for, for levels I designed. As far as I'm concerned, not on me for the rest of my life now, that's I'm a level designer. Not go to college, I'm, I'm off, not off to college now, man. I'm a level designer. No, or off to college. At university, I did a generalist degree uh, and it was that general really that I, I couldn't even get a job. And so I think the first semester I had to do computing mathematics and graphics programming uh, and then our oh, 3D modeling. And then I could pick a couple of those. So I did like script writing and creative drawing. This is all one course. And then the next year I did a bit more animation, but not proper animation. So it was more like, funny enough, camera animation, I guess, but but it was, it was like um, the fundamentals of computer animation, but nice to teach you how to animate characters. That was a different module that I couldn't do because I'd not done the prerequisites in the first year, you know. Uh, but I did ask, I had to have special permission to do uh, the follow on modules to 3D modeling. So the first year I did intro to 3D modeling. So I, I was the only student that year uh, that did the three core modules for computer animation course, uh, the graphics programming course, and the um, 3D art for games course. Yeah, so that's that sort of background there anyway. I really wanted to work in film, and I wasn't a good enough animator to work as an animator in film. Like, I'm a good animator, but I'm not good enough because I'm not patient enough and I just have too many ideas and, and I don't want to spend time digging into any of them. I just want to, you know, like I want to, that's why previous suits me because it's like very broad animation. Just let me get the ideas, let me get my gags in uh, and, and and the things that I want to do. And, and then, you know, let somebody else worry about like how it needs to be animated properly because I just don't have the, I ain't got the patience for it. So I sort of figured out that previous was the way to go, but I didn't really know much about it. The guy that, that I knew who worked in previous kept telling me I had to learn how to animate a camera. And I was like, how do I, how do you animate, how does a camera move? Like I know how to animate a creature or a character, a person, but I don't know how does a camera move? And it just never, it, honestly, it perplexed me for years. I, I didn't know, I just didn't know what he meant. And it was so simple, like it, <laughs> just to animate it like it's a real, like it looks like a real shot. And it's, you know, and, and that's when your animator's brain does work. It's still the same thing. It's time and space and all that stuff. Uh, all the stuff you learn when you're animating, but it, it applies to the camera and the viewpoint. You know, it just never really clicked for me until I applied at Proof London. And there was some camera animation on my, creature animation showreel, which is why I got the job. Um, I didn't think that was camera animation. It didn't occur to me. I was just trying to shoot the animation that I'd made. <laughs> so yeah, so I got that job at Proof, uh, which is where we met. I, I think I picked up quite a lot of stuff, obviously film obsessed. Um, and uh, and so quickly I got given some, you know, interesting meaty things to do. Um, we'll go through the showreel. So yeah, I guess this chat we're 
predominantly talking about one of your personal projects. Oh yeah, and um, well, I'll tell you about how it come about first. So um, we were in lockdown last year, um, not even a year ago. So this is now uh, the end of March. And I read an article on No Film School about um, Has Dulul, if you, if you know Has. Um, yeah, he uh, he made this film Battle Suit using Unreal, and uh, and I was interested then because I'm like, oh, I actually want to make a film. Like, I, you know, that's what I've always wanted to do. I never really had the opportunity. I've been writing scripts for ages, and you know, so it just seemed like an opportunity to get something done and and to, and to try something. And I every time I try to make something in Maya, like I always get frustrated because I just don't know enough stuff, and and it's. Like I'm a generalist, but I'm like you know I've got weaknesses, obviously, and and I always felt like I needed other people to help. And it occurred to me that with Unreal and a marketplace, that I like, actually might not need as much help with that. Like it seems like there's a lot of stuff comes off the marketplace, and it's just works. It just looks good, and it works. Maybe there's something I could do. And or, you know, reading this article, and Haz was talking about how we, you know you just kit bashed assets and stuff and i was like well, that's what, and mocap and that's, that's what we do at work like that's what i do that's my day-to-day -day job like i bet i can learn to do it in unreal and and, and actually make some so that morning then i'm walking the dogs and i try and think of a film i could make and i didn't want to make some that didn't need to make it kind of thing i've got i've got some good ideas but most of them were not applicable to making something you know that's about five minutes long in unreal that i can do on my own so it occurs to me to make a war film because war is a pretty common, uh, commonly trod ground for games. So I figured there'd be good assets on the marketplace for a war type thing. And then my brother is an author and I just proofread his second book. It's about a bloke who goes to war. And, and I remember there being a particularly exciting sequence that I'd visualize as I'm reading it because that's what I do. And I was like, oh, that'd be really good. So I dug up the, I'd, I'd, my proofread A4 printed to copies and um, found the bit that I was talking about and I cleared it with him and he said, yeah, go for it. And by the end of the day, I've written a 10 page script for a short film um, and lined up a few assets that I want to use. Um, and the idea was that it'd be one set, minimal characters, two or three, and um, the scope crept, <laughs> to say the least, um, as scopes do. Um, so, so yeah, so, um, well, I'll, I'll, we'll go upstairs and I'll show you the trailer and um, uh, and then we'll talk a bit more about it and how I'm doing it in real and what the future plans are, I guess. Right, yeah, so this is my office. This is where I've spent the, the last year working on. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, if we, are we, I guess we're upstairs now in the office and we can do some screen yeah. share stuff. This, and this I is guess where the magic happens. Wherever you want to start. Uh, I'm going to show you some, I'm going to show you some videos first. Yeah, show uh, reels. Um, trailers all that stuff that'll be really cool to see. yeah all right so here goes this is the jurassic so this is my jurassic world reel i was fortunate enough to get these boards sequences where it was really just a one person job and so i ended up with large sections of sequences um so yeah these, these are um and i think this shows why i, I think we both love working in previous because it's just really good fun um so yeah anyway here we go
I do a quick, I do a quick sort of scrub through, and um, this was more or less the first stuff I got given to do. Uh, so, what if people don't know what previs is? We effectively need to take what's been done in the boards and ratify it with what's been built on set, right? So, this was storyboarded at the time when it was boarded. This this bar didn't exist; it wasn't in set design or anything else. Uh, and then they started building the set and everything. And this bar, this bar material which is obviously that's what happens you know you, this think the things develop um but the dinosaur had to come out of this th this here because that was where the weak point is where the the lock is right you can't you can't attack anything else but you can bash his way out of this thing uh so therefore logically he's gonna hit he's gonna hit this thing so no one had thought about it and i it was kind of up to me and i just thought well i think it's funny if because he's only a young dinosaur like i think it's funny if he hits his head on it and you know he's got this big bone chrome dome thing uh, I think it's funny if he gets, if, if he's, you know, a bit dazed. So I animated it um, in falling into the thing. I think that stays in the film and then he, and then he wanders off and, and he's shaking his head still. That's all like, that was my idea. Like, you know, that was my, I, I thought that was going to be fun. So this is another example there. So um, as you can see, the original idea was that this was going to be much more uh, ex an expansive battle. Um, it, it, at least that's how I imagined it. I don't think that's how anyone else imagined it. For me, it, that was just, I thought that's how it would go. Um, and then sometimes, you know, like things like this get left in, uh, where all these, you know, this guy never went through that window or <laughs> whatever. Um, they get left in, um, but you know, the, but the point of the matter is, the point of the shot is that gas coming out of there, this raptor doing what he's doing and these two. Uh, the rest of the stuff they just ignored, uh, and, and, and the end. I mean, you'll see in this next shot, the, the, the lad, pretty neat and tidy, really. Uh, I don't remember why. This is a shot I didn't do the previous for, but I did do the post viz for. Post viz, for anyone who doesn't know, is uh, you just take the dinosaur from it, especially if the shot's largely similar. We take the dinosaur, track the shot roughly, take the dinosaur from the old previs, and then stick it in the in the. Uh, on the plate this i i really liked doing this bit because um it uh i i, I this they didn't go with this type of animation i think in the end he jumps out of this window and lands on here i think something like that but at the time it, he had to come out of here and he definitely had to go this way um and so i animated this and i just thought it was going to be good fun and uh, it was and it's uh, it was probably the nicest bit of animation i did on the whole job really yeah, and then this is obviously the, so this was described to me by uh, the VFX soup Dave, and and uh, I got it all wrong. Like I had the because because he comes up, he's on here, right? So there was never any request that he roared or that the moon was involved. It was just that he was sniffing around trying to find Maisie, and Maisie's in here. Uh, when I first did it, I had him coming up on the other side, so he came up over the over the top, but eventually he got to this sort of position, and so I, I was showing it. To Dave and, and Dave was like, no, it's wrong, wrong, all wrong, all wrong, all wrong, all wrong, all wrong, all wrong. No. And then he went, yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then and then he showed it to Dan, and then Dan went, we need to get JA to look at this. So JA comes in, uh, the director, for anyone who's unfamiliar, JA Veona, who is a man who knows what a good shot looks like. And he comes in and he says, he looks at this, and, and Vickery's going, no, no, all wrong, all wrong. And then that happens. And uh, J.A. goes, that's an amazing shot. And I'm like, yep, that is why I do this job. That is it. Take Love it that. So that's my Jurassic World uh, showreel. Um, and then obviously uh, this year, uh, last year, but year, well, less than a year ago, nine months or so ago, I started making um, Praising Rick Ridge and Unreal. Uh, I'll go through the story. I'm going to show the trailer first. Um, and then we'll, we'll we'll look at the Unreal project, which is open here, and and walk through some things that I did. Uh, but this is the trailer for Praising Burke Ridge.
that's my brother's uh, book. Um, uh, that is the book there, and that's that's Dougie Douglas Clark. So, so this project was uh, started off obviously you uh, writing some, you know, ten pages of script, wanting to get into Unreal Engine. You created a trailer at first, was it Martin? No, no, I, I create the film first. Yeah, it's a short film. It's about uh, seven minutes long, um, and that's what came first. So. I, I started in Real Engine. In fact, the first thing I made, this was uh, the first sequence that came out, and this came out in, there's a, there's, a, there's a date on it, 20th of June, so 20 days after first writing the script, having not opened Unreal, um, this was uh, 20 days later. How have you found it, um, the transition and the difference in workflow and just from those like 20 days, I guess? Yeah, I mean, to me, it just there's things about it, like I said earlier downstairs, there's things about this that just make sense to me. There's a, there's a fundamental shift in mindset when you're dealing with a shop that you can't, usually, you can't, let's take a shot. So what I'm doing as I, as I, as I go through and I do, whenever I do any sort of demo on this stuff, I am, um, I'm updating these shots. So you see now it's raining up to here, right? So uh, it's not raining that shot actually, so we could do that one. Um, 300 version six is the latest in here. So I go to sequences and it's 03, 300. So that, the shot's now open. I can click on this camera to make the active camera uh, in the viewport. And so this is a this is a, what, what we call in previews, uh, JMO, a cosmetic update, right? The client is effectively, although I am my own client here, the client has decided me has decided that it is now raining in this sequence uh, and we've also cast Dougie and we now have a different model so I'm just going through and updating all these shots accordingly a few things I need to do and I'm doing these on every shot so it's, it's going to be a little bit uh, not old is the wrong word but I know and you know I've done, I've done it a few times now so first thing is Dougie needs to change now in Maya we would go swap reference and hopefully all the the, you know everything's going to work. It's effectively the same thing in Unreal. Uh, this is the skeletal mesh for Dougie. Uh, now I've got quite a few in here because I've been experimenting with a few things. Uh, the one that I want is uh, Dougie WW1, which is the one that I'm using for. As so that's the one he's got his blend shape loaded and he's in his World War One uniform. Uh, so that's done. He's got his, his, his very distinctive shape to his face, which I, I quite like. Is this you updating a shot for your project live with us right now? Yeah, or... yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. cool. Um, so uh, the next, the next one um, we're gonna. The next thing we need to do is add the rain. Uh, so now I, I'm, I'm in my obviously viewport, as you can see. Um, what we're gonna do is add some rain. I have a realistic starter VFX pack here that I got, which is really good. Um, and in particles, I get rid of that 300 environment and rain and bring that in. Now, it's important that you bring it down here into the sequencer, because if you drag it into here, it goes in the level, which is important. So any other shot you open this level will also have that rain <laughs> in the place that you put it there. It has to go into the sequencer. Um, and then um, it is, it's, it's over there, right? but it is at zero as you can see over it's at zero that's where he wants it he wants it at zero because i'm gonna attach it and it's quite important if you want to attach stuff the best way i found is to leave it at zero and then attach it via this method track attach and i'll attach it to the truck um and to the vehicle mesh and it doesn't really matter these are sockets you can attach to any one of them so now the rain is attached here um, I'm gonna, you see, this is my, this is the period of attachment. So this is the, how long it lasts. I want it to last the whole shot. So I'll drag that out. Um, and the other thing to do, uh, I'm gonna go to start the shot and I'm gonna add a track and a particle toggle track. And I'm gonna 
activate it. So now it is raining, as you can see on this viewport, it is raining, um, which is fine, except, except that when we press play, because I'm my rain is directly over the, the, the truck, what's probably gonna happen is the truck's gonna start driving and it might get in front of the rain because the rain's trailing, because the rain's simulated, right? Look at, it, look at it trailing, it's trailing behind. This is all happening in real time, it's trailing behind, right? So we wanna make it not do that. What I want to do is come back to the start, grab the rain, and I'll go local mode. And I'm just going to push it in front there a bit. And then if we hit play now, it, enough should, leeway to... should, it gives me enough lead time that yeah. the rain keeps coming in front. So yeah, that looks good. I see that you've enjoyed uh, camera lens filters, but for for a project like this, uh, I guess it'd be full of them, you know, like rain, explosions, dirt. Funny, funny, to... funny you should mention it, mate. Uh, as in the next thing on my list. Uh, now, I'm not doing it. I, I might be going overboard with it, right? Because it is on the, the same I'd be shot in the trailer. If there's a rate, if there's a camera out in the rain, I am putting an overlay on the lens uh, to, uh, to make it look like it's raining on it. If I were to press play on this, actually, I think this works. Um, can you see there's a wetness to the lens there? Oh, okay, yeah. Uh, you see the ripples and stuff? Yeah. Um, that's that's adding on anyway. It's only getting you so far. Um, that is a, a, a thing I got from the, um, I think it's raindrops, I think. Uh, so uh, camera-wise, I'm going to add uh, a dirt mask. Um, and I just go around there and pick one at random. It's trying to get one that looks wet. Some of them look scratched, which is not what I want. Um, so you pick that and let it let it do some. It'll not it'll not look any different for the time being. And then come in here and if you set this to like thirty or something, you see that there we got that. So let me take it to hundred and we'll really see it. So you see it here, yeah. Um, uh, I, I reckon uh, sixty or something, just to give it a bit of something. Uh, and you can see it does interplay with the light and stuff. It's really clever. Uh, so I reckon that's that really. That's a shot. That's a, that's a cosmetic shot update. So the next part of the procedure is to render it, right? So, so right. So that's that's now rendered. So I'm going to open my After Effects and I set up an After Effects file. It's basically empty, but it's just got the right settings in it that means I can bring these things in. Um, I, I'll show you what that does. So we just rendered 300 version seven, right? So I dragged the whole folder in. And what that's going to do is it remembers to interpret it at 24 frames a second. Uh, and then I drag that down to a composition. After Effects names that composition, the same shot name. And then we drag that down here uh, into the render queue. And this is it now remembers my default settings, which is DNX HD. I've put my initials on it just so I know what it's doing. What it's doing. And it will remember the last place it rendered to, which is Crazy Ridge, Ridge, Edit, Shots, Mov. So that's going to take ages. That's the longest part of the process. Uh, well, that's doing that, and we'll update the uh, the edit afterwards. Um, I'm just thinking, uh, just I guess, uh, is there a way to sort of compare how we would do it outside of Unreal and the benefits and how nice and quick it is in Unreal Engine? But I guess loose comparisons. Uh, first of all, there's this. I've got a shot open. That shot is uh, just 300 version seven. Here's me opening 400 version seven. Oh, it's open. That's pretty quick, right? <laughs> nice. And uh, rendering in this will be faster than real time. Maya will be less than real time. So automatically, by my reckoning, if you've got a shot that's in Maya, uh, it takes five minutes to open and it takes five minutes to change and five minutes to render. Uh, here, it takes basically five minutes and that is the five minutes that it takes to change it. Um, that's assuming that it's a camera change or something like that. Now it gets more complicated if you're dealing with animation. Currently, Unreal's not built to deal with animation, although that is changing and there are ways you can do it. Um, it's, but it's not necessarily what it's what it's built for. So the, the pipeline for animation is necessarily that it goes to Maya first. I think I've got a Maya open with some of this stuff in. So this is, uh, I think this is some mocap. It's probably not very good mocap. Uh, is that Dougie straight from Mixamo or is that really? That, so this is, so yeah, so this is the, the, the old pipeline. Um, 
is that I can I download Dougie. So it doesn't matter what Dougie looks like in mine, that's the thing. The, the important thing is that his skeleton's uh, correct. So as long as that skeleton goes into Unreal, do not matter what Dougie looks like in Unreal, that's the skeleton that drives the animation. So uh, I never bothered updating him, that's how he came out of Fuse. And then I used this um, old uh, Mixmo Maya control rig thing to get a rig. And so this is some mocap that I've recorded. He's holding his shoulder. It doesn't, I don't do hands at the minute, so I just animate those myself. So currently, I would uh, I would just pose that hand. Um, he's holding his shoulder. That's the new the new the new thing in the in the script is that he holds his shoulder, and that's when he remembers the a flashback to the the changing rooms. Um, and then rather than like in the trailer, he picks the ball up in that shot, the, the first shot, the trailer, he picks the ball up in the grass. He's actually gonna put it down. Um, he's holding it and he's hurt his shoulder. So he's gonna put the ball down uh, and then he, he walks back over here. There's a bit of weirdness here. My mocap suit does not like me turning around. That's just one of the things it doesn't like. But I get around it by just not shooting it. So I just shoot that from like here, right? <laughs> And then um, for some reason it handled this pretty well though, actually this uh, kick, he's gonna boot the ball. So uh, let, I'll just do it now while we're here, eh? let's just do it. Uh, so I'm gonna click export. Now, what you want is a nice clean skeleton, cleanly rigged. That's also something that we want. However you drive the control rig uh, to, to, to apply custom animations is up to you. Um, the idea is you want to be able to get the skeleton back out and, and when you present it to Unreal, you just want to send the skeleton unless you've got facial animation that's blend shape driven, in which case you want to take the mesh as well because it has the blend shape data in. So it comes up with um, FBX export. So we've done that. Uh, so now, uh, if I go to characters and Dougie and animations, I can now drag that and so all Dougie's animations are in here. Dougie's got a different skeleton to everybody else because he's a different shape. Um, and I'll talk through my mocap pipeline here as well, which is how I go through uh, Noiton mocap, which is where I get the mocap, my raw mocap data. I convert that to Mixmo, a Mixmo skeleton. That gets uh, put onto uh, the Maya rig so that it's live in Maya because very rarely do I get a mocap take I'm fundamentally happy with. So I always will put it through Maya so it goes onto the control rig so that I can then make adjustments to it, even if it's like moving the, the pole vectors around just to make sure that the, no, there's nothing weird happening or doing a, do, you know, uh, doing an oil filter on it. Um, so anyway, uh, that uh, Dougie kick things in it. So I'm just gonna drag this in, it's done. That's me fixing the computer, telling it to record. <laughs> so let's let's do uh, a shot in the, in the rugby ground. So uh, this is the shot that is the effect, the, the opener effectively. So what's 150? First thing actually is open the right level. Uh, so the level is uh, Far Town. Far Town is uh, in Huddersfield. It is the rugby ground that Douglas Clark played in for real. And was this made in Unreal Engine, the grass? And... The grass is Unreal Engine. Uh, uh, it, I, and actually, I need better grass really because it, uh, it, you know, it's a bit um, flowery for a rugby pitch. Um, if we, if we then open 150, if I come in here, this is now the shot that you've seen on the trailer. Uh, so he comes down, he picks that up. So effectively what we're gonna do now is say, uh, we'll go to there, uh, kick, right. So I'll drag that down here now. So now he's gonna actually put that ball down. Uh, so we'll just put him in the right place and he's in the right place for the shot. At least. Actually, better thing to do first, if I delete the ball, is get me a new ball. Uh, so anyway, so I'm gonna put that there because that's where the camera's lined up to be focused on. That's why I did that there. Uh, and then I'll get rid of the old one. But I mean, yeah, the, the idea is obviously that uh, eventually we're gonna come to this kind of thing. Let's stick another camera in when it gives it some welly. That's gonna be a good shot of that. Get the sun in there as well. Like, wallop, something like that. Uh, get rid of that camera. Let's get rid of a new one. Let's get a new one in here and then there we go. So you can see now I'm piloting that camera in this viewport. Uh, yeah, let's not be may, I mean, a bit, well, it might be a bit wide, to be honest. Uh, see, this is the bit I love, like, just like, oh, a bit wide there, do that, do this, do, see, do, do this. Uh, uh, there you go, what are we talking, look at that, 27. And, and what, what are some of the um, your favourite sort of things when creating previews in Unreal Engine? It's the speed, mate, it's the speed. It's not even, I mean, all the stuff that it looks great is brilliant, right? but it's the speed, like it is just 
faster than anything we've with with previous that is heavily you know that's a key thing isn't it turning things around not being too yeah. precious about it making changes on the fly back and forth yeah. creatively exploring ideas and visually seeing what's possible what it looks like on screen what are your plans now for, for the rest of this are you looking to get i know you mentioned funding to really push it further or where, yeah where are so you right now? trying to trying to get funding to push it further um uh, and but I, ideally, I just like to get it finished. Uh, like I, I just want to get that get, get that thing finished. So I, I, I didn't show um, I didn't show Alitia actually. I'll tell you that. So I made this over Christmas, and I did this with literally with a live edit. So I didn't really know what the shots were. I was just faffing around making a story, uh, and I did it live. Um, I, I'll show you it now, and then we'll I'll talk just briefly about it, and then we'll call it a day. You know what, even just this, we could have a whole nother video just talking about this really cool little thing that you put together as well. It's just... Yeah, and, and this took a couple of days, right? And so the thing nice. is, like, um, when you look at this shot, hey, you see this hawk swinging? Yeah. I really wanted that because the, 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 the boat is live on the ocean, right? So the ocean is really simulating and the boat is really floating on it. But I wanted to have the hawk, like, react naturally. So... If you see here, it's actually sim fully simulated, it's reacting naturally. And then this shot here was meant to start looking up at the hook and come down. Because uh, I really like the idea of looking at this hook as it swung around and then come down to find him. So he slips and he falls down and then we we follow him down. And the only reason this shot exists is because I happen to notice that this reflective spot, I didn't put it there, like it was just part of the it, it's, oh, really? it's part of the materials. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just it's but I mean I would have put one there if I thought about it, but I didn't. I just put a a, a, a wet pass on the entire material. And then uh I was like, oh I can see that can I get the bat to land in it? And I did. And then I was like, well that's that's golden, right? And then got the wet look overlay thing on this. It, it looks nice and wet. I'm buying, you know, by the wetness, the back creeps into the shot here. It's just good fun. And it took a couple of days. Uh I think this shot works really well as it zooms past the camera. Um it took a couple of days and it was just I was just tinkering around like like completely free, completely able to do whatever I wanted to do. Um I, I specifically didn't limit myself to storyboards or anything like that. I just wanted to try things out. And so a couple of establishers, and I had, a, as I say, I had a live edit. I was rendering shots, putting them in the edit, deleting old ones, and and just trying things out. And that's, I think, what real time filmmaking is like. The idea that you just go, oh, what if I had a shot of this? And just go in, and two minutes later, you've got it, <laughs> and you render it out and try it in an edit. I mean, I just think that's great fun. Like, I, 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 I can't imagine why you wouldn't want to incorporate that into a, like a previous type pipeline. Just seeing, uh, yeah, what's what's possible, and like you know, you've not been using Unreal that long, but obviously you're no. using more <laughs> no, and more no. now. And no. it, but it just shows the you know what's capable, just the sheer like accessibility of what's available out there, and you know the documentation, the assets, the resources, the learning. People could get up and running fairly quickly and put together little stories. In no time. I mean, I so I did, just so anyone, you know, obviously I've got an extensive background in 3D graphics and, and what have you, but if that also describes you and you don't know how to get started doing this stuff in Unreal, I did two tutorials. They both lasted an hour. So I did two hours of tutorials and then I made, like, I started making this. Like, and when, when once you once you get that momentum and drive and you're but, picking up at things and yeah. you're going, you, you, that will just snowball. And before you know, it, you're making them in ten. Oh, definitely. Pitch, those two you know? tutorials were those two tutorials were my first hour in Unreal <laughs> Engine and my first hour in Sequencer. You, you, that's it. That's that's all I needed. Uh, there's plenty more tutorials on learn.unrealengine.com. Mine, I just want to say thanks so much. That's been amazing. Such a great uh, insight and a pleasure to talk with you as always, man.
Mate, you're very welcome and uh, cheers to oh, you. Oh man, cheers. Take it easy. You too, buddy. Thanks for watching this episode. If you're enjoying these types of videos, please like and subscribe and we'll see you on the next one. Thank you.